So welcome back, and uh, I guess here we are again. Today's, I guess, frustration session is going to revolve around this thing, which is a about a year and a half old mosquito magnet that was not cheap. Although when it was running, it really did seem to help around here, and I have noticed a difference since I've been having some difficulty with it, that there are definitely more mosquitoes out and about when you're sitting outside. It, it ran really well for the first nine months, about a year ago, and then I got through November and I set it up, you know, cleaned it, did what it was supposed to do, and just let it sit till I tried to fire it back up in February of this year and it wouldn't start. Go through its cycle, the fan would come on and then it would trip out and you'd get the little blinky light. Um, so it was still in a warranty, so I called the company and they suggested trying to start it with the bottle only turned on to about 30 or 40 percent of the valve open. You know, your standard you know, propane tank barbecue, 20 pounder. <clears throat> and so I did that and sure enough, first time I did it, it fired up. And uh, so that worked, and I went through three or four more bottles, and it was fine. And this last time I did it, it tripped in the middle of a tank, uh, but then uh, I gave it a kick and it restarted. And uh, once that tank ran out, I went to swap it out, and I have not been able to get it to restart no matter what I do with the valve, with anything. So um, I haven't had too much luck finding troubleshooting guides online for these poor things and I really have no idea what's going on in here I know there's a uh, you know you got your typical barbecue style gas inlet this is a regulator but I think it's also a high flow trip so it's possible that there's something going on in there which we'll have to check the only other thing I'm aware of is uh, you can see the fan in there it's like just a regular old computer fan. And uh, I know it runs, because when you turn it on, you can hear it spool up. That's what draws the bugs into it, I guess. Then there's some crud built up over the time, on the, you know, inlet of this thing, full of bugs and crap down in that hole. But, uh, I mean, there's nothing visible. So, since it's already screwed up and out of warranty now, I'm going to take it apart and see what I can see and test what I can test. And if I can figure this out, maybe it'll help other people out who are having some problems with these things. So it's hard to really tell, but it seems like there, at this point, there's only four obvious screws and a couple on the back that maybe will allow me to separate this. There are Phillips heads way down in there. Apparently not too proficient at getting to one. She is. Oh, look at that. Okay. So what we have, we've got the on-off switch. This is the purge valve. That's the inlet. This Looks to be the burner assembly. I'm assuming this is my igniter. Who knows? Any one of these things could be the problem. What I do see is I'm thinking this is a thermocouple or a flame eye. And that is 
pretty crudded up. But anyway, I think I'm gonna hook it up to the bottle and start a cycle. See if I can see anything or hear anything. If I can hear gas going through here, that means this is good. If that doesn't work, I can unscrew it from here, pull that plug out because it's just a rubber grommet and just test it to see if it flows when that's on, you know, when I open the bottle. Um, I'll also be able to test this solenoid, I would expect, by feeling it when I click the button because that should pull up as it starts to ignite. I should be able to electrocute myself on that igniter see if that's doing anything and if all of those things are working and I'm gonna bet they are that just looks suspicious to me if that thing has that much buildup on the outside what might it have on the inside and if that is the flame eye it just won't let it uh, that it won't see the flame and tell it to okay it's it's okay to keep gas running and it will eventually trip out so, we're going to see what we can do. Now, what bothers me is I heard nothing from this. So, it's possible that that regulator may not be regulating. It may be stuck or something. Um, what I do know is that after I do this, and I crack this, I hear a, where the pressurized propane is leaking out of here just a little bit as it releases. So there's propane coming out of the bottle, and I've tried this on several different full bottles and to, to no avail. Um, but uh, I'm going to go get a multimeter just so that that might help. Okay, so now we're hot. Hear the fan running. It's actually blowing this way, which I guess makes sense because it's creating a vacuum that pulls the bugs in and then it exhausts out the top of the unit. Alright, so let's see what we got here. Okay, well that's not what I expected. It's actually AC, but only 12 volts. And I'm actually getting 16.6 .6 volts at the input, which should be fine. Now what I can't do is smell propane. That solenoid just clicked. It hasn't started yet, it's still in its startup cycle. Oh, now I can smell a little propane. So, I'm also going to guess at this point that. To check this regulator, all I have to do is pull this Phillips screw and this Phillips screw and then with the gas off and then turn the gas back on because this should be a like a needle and seed or something that allows the propane to flow and if I pull that and the propane flows, then this is not the problem. Or at least it flows, it may be a pressure issue, but it flows. What I don't necessarily understand is why the fan voltage seemed to drop that low during whatever was cycling that when the propane was on. And what I didn't hear was anything clicking. I may have to get some household pins to put to back probe these connectors. Oh maybe I can uh, maybe I can back probe the circuit board. 
Uh, 11.94 volts, that's pretty good, that's 12. Got about 11 volts on the igniter. And these are DC now. I have nothing going on on the fire eye, but that is probably a resistance value. Right now we've got a hundred and fluctuating between 80 and 120,000 ohms. But it is not started, it is still going through its startup cycle. Fan is cycling down. I did not hear the click that time. There is 12 volts going to the solenoid. It hasn't shut off. So it is, if nothing else, attempting to light. It is lit. That is the first time in two months, in probably 20 different on-off cycles, that that thing successfully fired. Of course it did. Well, I guess that tells me that it can work if I film it every time while it's disassembled. So, great. Well, I'm gonna shut her down and just to give everybody a little understanding of what's in here as well as myself, I'm gonna pull a couple of these small pieces off, check my propane flow, which obviously it seems to think is fine. This valve is wide open, it is not cracked like they had suggested before so it just did a full startup properly on its own i'm going to pull the igniter out and take a look at that i'm going to pull whatever the hell that is and take a look at that actually i think i'm going to check that resistance again to see if it's any notably anything notably different than it was a minute or two ago well, right now it is down to there's 13,000. So that is what we've got, is it has developed enough temperature in there to, to drop that resistance to the point where it will allow this whole thing to keep running. Because it was, if you remember, it was like at a hundred and something thousand before. Um, so that's what happens in that. So that, I wonder if there's a buildup like that internally to it and it's getting insulated and just has trouble getting that resistance down. I don't know, but uh, yeah, that thing is not blinking, it is on, which means it is running properly right now and would continue to do so if I put it back together and allowed it, but I'm not that guy, so we're going to take this thing apart. Now it's off, and it's going to go through its completion of its cycle. I'm sick of waiting for its cooling cycle to be done, or evacuation cycle, so, there. Okay, a little smaller screwdriver. This is a cluster. These are kind of silly because they're halfway under the plastic. So, no real good way to... Okay. That answers that question. It's just a spring-loaded plunger. Oof. Yep. That works.
No issues there. Plunger is nice and free. O-ring is well lubed. So that's most likely not our problem. Uh, as we just proved by the fact that it started up that last time, it does get propane. Now the solenoid looks good. Super low pressure. I mean, it could barely, barely feel the propane coming out. But it is, it is working. So now that's okay. Now we're going to try to see what that thing looks like. Oh, there we go. That's how that comes off. There's two prongs. And I, if I'm correct, this should be the igniter. Huh, isn't that something? Well, that explains why I didn't hear any clicking is because it's not what I thought. It's not a piezoelectric igniter. It's actually a heater. So it had a steady 10 or 11, 12 volts or something like that on it. And all it's doing, you can kind of see it a little bit, is all it's doing is it's heating this, uh, I don't know if that's tungsten or steel or whatever it is, but that's all it's doing is heating that in the propane path. Now, that's interesting. It's also fairly clean looking. I'll put you back. Let's see how many times I'm gonna drop this. Living right. It also had an O-ring on it, if I didn't already say that. Now, this thing which since it is off now maybe I can get a little bit better reading no reading at all no continuity whatsoever and before I was getting a resistance reading so that's interesting now that is Chewed up. Oh, there, she's moving. They really over torqued that plastic when they put it in because it was just about stripped. Oh, look at that. Betting that's part of my problem. Man, that's filthy. And I blow this thing out religiously. I've got the CO2 cartridges, and every time I change a tank, I gotta blow this out. But I don't think this is, I don't know that this is the result of any of that. This just looks like it's, it's just corroded terribly. I mean, just aluminum corrosion, or maybe it's galvanic. I don't know. I don't. I don't know what material that is. But uh, okay. Well, oh, look at that. There's a little ceramic grate inside there. Okay. Looks like ceramic anyway. The inside isn't too crapped up. The inside looks pretty good even though uh, this piece is really fouled. 
So I'm gonna get a wire brush, clean that up the best I can, maybe get a little air and blow it out a little bit, and put it back together and fire it up and see if it works. As I'm betting, whatever this is supposed to do, and all that corrosion is probably not allowing it to do what it's supposed to do. That is really chewed up. Now this is gonna fare. My guess is this just has a little temperature switch. It's what's most likely going on in here is as the propane's flowing through, this heater comes on, this grid starts glowing, kind of like a, a little IR heater that you'd have in the house. And this senses the temperature change and knows that, hey, I've got a fire going on, therefore, I can continue running and eventually after a certain amount of time it kicks into standard mode where it's just looking at that sig that signal to run um, but this thing has gotten so degraded I believe it I mean it obviously works because it did start that last time uh, but th this thing has gotten so chewed up that it's better already but I don't know what I'm going to do with all that garbage. Man. And really, that's, that's just aluminum corrosion. You can see some in there. That's just uh, what happens to aluminum. Yeah, like, I'm going to go get something else to try to clean it with. There. Just... See what we can get off of there with this thing. One thing I noticed on this is it does not have a uh, an O-ring. So maybe this thing is supposed to be making contact of some sort, but then again, I don't know, because instead of a metal screw, they used a plastic one. So I've wrapped a piece of crocus cloth around my screwdriver so I can get a little purchase in there. Clean that disaster up a little bit. Get out of here, wasp. Shoot. You don't need to be on camera. Although if I get stung, that might be funny. Okay. Now... piece of this and clean this off. That's not, certainly not new, but it's better by a long stretch than what it was. Not all jammed in there now, anyway. Plastic screw. The other piece of it is, if that is supposed to be grounded, and there was a serious amount of corrosion this maybe if I can see what I'm doing plug that back in there plug that one back in there and turn this on and now we're going to try it again. 
Okay, so what we just missed, because I'm an idiot and hadn't deleted files off my SD card in a while, um, is this. I've, I've determined the procedure that this thing goes through in order to do its startup. When you first turn it on, the light is blinking slowly. And it turns the fan on and runs that for several minutes. The next thing it does is it turns the heater on, puts 12 volts to these blue lines, and heats that little element that I showed you earlier. After that heats up for about 10 or 15 seconds, it puts 12 volts to this solenoid and opens the propane. Then it starts looking for the signal from this resistor that we cleaned to drop. That's, that signal starts off at about 150 to 170,000 volts on this 200,000, uh, sorry, volts, ohms. On this 200 kilo ohm scale, this was bouncing 150 to 170. Sometimes it dropped to 50, but on average, it was way up over 100. And as this has heated up during its startup sequence, it dropped off to now where it's been running for a little bit. We are in the three to two to four to five thousand range. So that tells it, hey, I've got a fire. I'm running properly. Everything's good. I know I'm running, so you can continue to run. But what I found interesting is after, after the startup sequence, when it's in run mode like this, The heater shuts off. There's no longer any voltage on the heater. So that little ceramic looking grid inside this thing that I mentioned, I believe is kind of like a catalyst bed. Once it gets hot, it's hot enough to keep the thing going. And as you just keep feeding propane in, it just keeps the heat alive. This thing is just making sure that it either, that it stays running and if it loses a signal from that thing that was all crusty, it's going to crap out. So, she's running, she's not blinking. I'm pretty happy with this because this thing wasn't cheap and it does seem to help. I don't have any empirical evidence other than when I'm sitting outside there's fewer mosquitoes it seems. when it, There's more mosquitoes over the last several weeks that I've been trying to get it started than there were before. But... Um, so, I hope that's helped you all if you have problematic mosquito magnets. Rather than throwing them out, pull your four body screws, give this thing a clean, and uh, put it back together and see if it'll work. Because, hey, why not? The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can source one of these on the internet. Because... That's not in great shape still, for whatever reason, that's corroding. And if it dies again, I may have to end up replacing that. I mean, I don't know how often I can clean it like that and still have it function. But it's sealed internally, so I mean, it really should just take, you know, what I just did to it. So, in any case, appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed it. If you like the channel, please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up on the video. Ask me any questions you want. And I usually am pretty quick responding to the comments. So... Y'all have a good day. Thank you.